Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm talking with Adam T. Croft. He's set up some really cool premium scripts that do some kind of audio suite style workflow. Uh, so we're gonna get into how those work, where you can get them. But first, let's, uh, let's meet Adam and see what's going on. Hey, Adam. Hi, John, how are you? I'm great. Uh, thanks for coming on and uh, sharing your scripts with us, sharing the information about the scripts. You're not, you know, not giving us the scripts, but uh, you know, yeah. Uh, so who the hell are you? I'm Adam Croft. You might know me better on the internet uh, everywhere that you might see me as Adam T. Croft. Uh, the story behind that is there's, there's so many Adam Crofts on IMDb that I added my middle initials so that people would be able to find me, and now it's kind of stuck. So I'm on all sorts of various channels online, adamtcroft.com, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, at Adam T. Croft, and various Slack channels as Adam T. Croft. It's become a branded thing now. We could. And once again, if, if everyone wants to find Adam and his scripts and information about uh, Rescript and, and things like that, you can go to adamtcroft.com and find him on Twitter at Adam Croft. How long have you been a Reaper user? I've been using Reaper, let's see, at least since 2011, I want to say. Mm -hmm. Because to give you the, the entire backstory, I'm, an, I'm a Pro Tools user since 7.4. Um, is my initial introduction to the world of um, desktop audio. And, you know, everybody in the world needed to use Pro Tools and everybody always used Pro Tools. So I got, I, I touched Nuendo, I touched Cubase, all of the extra um, different things that come with them. But I got into uh, film work pretty quickly once I got my start in the industry. And everybody, of course, in post uses Pro Tools. So, um, at one, at some point, it became more of a hindrance to go between uh, Final Cut, which is what my editors were using, and uh, jump between that and Pro Tools, and and using all of the in in between go betweens uh, for all of that sort of stuff. And I found eventually, I, I don't even remember where I first learned about Reaper, but I downloaded the trial. And then found that I could import all of the audio, everything would be synced with video, and there were very few issues, even though there were like video frame rate issues at the time and you had to kind of work some stuff out. It was a lot easier to get going than, than Pro Tools was. Mm. Um, and you couldn't beat the price tag. And at the time, I, I wasn't exactly making a ton of money doing freelance work and all of that sort of stuff. So it, I stuck with it. And eventually um, put out lots of web series with it, multiple film um, titles, and uh, DVDs with it, too. What kind of work, audio-wise, were you doing with that? Mostly uh, all my professional work has been film post-production work. Okay. You know, I've done a fair bit of games at this point, too. If you go look at, like, my LinkedIn, for example, if you go uh, stalk me online, most all my stuff is in dialogue. Um, of course, you know, with a lot of... Uh, on-set film work, a lot of post-production, um, worked with Bungie doing stuff on their motion capture stage with dialogue work, and now I do uh, audio localization for Xbox that's all dialogue work. So I'm really used to the human voice and how it sounds and how it's supposed to sound through a microphone, and, and that's kind of been my background forte in working in Reaper. Very cool. All right, so tell us about your instant take suite of scripts. Yeah, so um, background behind this is... Uh, work pretty closely with quite a few game audio guys in the past couple of years. I've My career's slowly but surely drifted more and more into game audio, and I'm not a sound designer by any means, uh, but I work with a lot of them. And, and invariably, I've heard a lot of different complaints about Pro Tools, and a lot of people, uh, Reaper is now a really big thing for the sound design community for a bunch of various reasons, uh, and a lot of guys are starting to evangelize uh, Reaper uh, in the world of sound design, and, and women too for that for that matter. Yeah. I had a, a complaint from a friend of mine. Uh, you might know him online as Matt Ask or Matt Martinson up in Vancouver. And it, people were jumping down Matt's throat one day saying that he needed to at least try Reaper. And Matt's an old Pro Tools user and is not, I wouldn't say stuck in his ways or anything, but Matt has a, has a way of working and that's, it works for him. And if you're a veteran in the industry and you've been working a certain way, then you're going to work that way because it makes sense for you. Uh, but Matt expressed an interest in Reaper and thinks it's really cool, but uh, doesn't really have a reason to switch. So uh, his biggest complaint was the fact that there was nothing like audio suite in Reaper. It essentially meaning that 
as a sound designer, a lot of sound designers use offline um, bouncing, right? So you want to iterate on your sound effects uh, as as fast and rapidly as possible to try out new things, to have a test bed, and and know what your plugin processing is going to sound like as quickly as possible and get it done on a, a large variety of sounds all at one time. Uh, Reaper has somewhat of the ability to do that, but at the same time, there's no like preview like Audio Suite has where you press a preview button and then you can hear a loop over and over again of the sound and you can tweak it live and, and know what's going on. Um, yeah, Reaper kind of has a, uh, a commitment phobia. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a really good way to put it. Um, so I've heard people using take effects before. I've heard people using glue before and all sorts of different things. Um, but there's just nothing where you hit a key or you hit a button and then the sound loops or multiple sounds loop. And then you can tweak whatever effect that you want. And then you hit go and it takes it, uh, which is audio suite to a T. Yeah. So I, I started working on this and then I had a, a, a couple other people who were interested. And then the, the other big name that would um, stand out in the audio community is, is Mark Kilborn uh, from Call of Duty and Activision. And Mark pinged me directly one day and was like, this is really awesome, but can I do an entire effect chain? So instead of having, as Pro Tools does, one effect at a time, he wanted to bounce entire chains down. Yeah. Uh, so he'd you know, have his EQ, his compressor, whatever, uh, and do 40 different audio files all at one time that way. And you can see real fast how the time savings would just be enormous. Right. You're not, you're not uh, putting in that same effects change to each individual item on the timeline. You don't have to run everything through in real time through the, the track effects chain. Or bouncing everything down in a in a more convoluted way, right? You can apply it right to the items or yep. copies of the item. So that you know, having that conversation and then various further conversations was like, can we take this without a preview? Which essentially is take effects, but you know, in the in my code, I guess. Um, and then you know, you've got post production users and you yourself who have been talking about, well, I love this, but I need it non destructive because I need it to iterate in a in a way that I I can see my takes. Yeah, I need a way to go back. Right, because of the way that Rescript works, it's kind of clunky in the undo. You can actually undo the takes that you do, uh, but of course, the audio file is going to actually stay on your hard drive rendered. And then uh, you're gonna you'll end up with a bunch of different audio files plus the undo. You have to it's like two or four steps depending on what the take is because the API for Reaper is funky as turn as, as when it comes to undoing. So, um, but essentially, I had various different people ask me for all of these different types of functionality, and it turned into this thing that was like, well, it was a small animal to begin with, and now the entire package is eight scripts plus um, I've added a key map for new Pro Tools users who have no idea what they're doing in Reaper because that was the idea originally that my, Matt's a Pro Tools user. And if he's going to switch into Reaper, you're going to have the learning curve of Reaper and the shortcut keys of Reaper. And at the same time, he's going to have to learn how the actions list works and all that sort of stuff. So I've tried to build out a uh, actions or a, a, a key map that makes sense for Pro Tools users. And then on top of that, I've also recorded a bunch of different walkthrough videos. So if it's your first time ever working in Reaper, you can get to see what the actions list looks like, how to import things into the actions list, how to set up your first key command, and then how to actually run the script too. So, so this is actually a lot bigger than I thought. Yeah. And on top of it, there's, there's eight scripts. Uh, which are the single effect version, which is what Pro Tools users are familiar with. There's the what I call the multi-effect version, which is all of your entire effect chain. Then there's non-preview modes and non-destructive modes for each of them. So there's four scripts, depending on if you're looking for a single uh, single effect or if you're looking for an entire effect chain. Very cool. Yeah. So uh, can you take us through the actual step-by-step -step process of using these? Yeah, definitely. So you can see my screen here. I'm actually going to show you because verbally that's kind of confusing. Let me show you my actions list and then make it even easier. You, you can see here I have instant take, multi-effect, and then there's no preview, no preview, non-destructive, and non-destructive, and then single effect has that same thing. So multi-effect gives you a loop, uh, a preview loop. Multi-effect, no preview, takes the preview loop away, but does the same thing as multi-effect. Then, of course, there's no preview, and it's also non-destructive and then just the non-destructive mode. So this one loops, but then also gives you an extra take. So eight scripts in, in total is the end of the thing. 
Um, so essentially what you want to do is once you start a Reaper project up, the, let's actually call this a track so you can see what's going on here. And then these are sounds downloaded from Freesound, which is just the best place ever, right? Best quality sound effect. Yeah. Well, but it's also like if I just want some mono files or some stereo files to test something out, I'm jumping on Freesound because it's yeah. just the easiest place to test something. Um, so once you get into your Reaper project, you want to make sure that you've got a plugin instantiated on a track. And it can actually be any track. So if I wanted to put the plugin on my first track or my third track, I could do that too. And it doesn't matter where it is. Um, just for the sake of having this very obvious to see what's going on, I put it on, on effect track. I think that's a good way of working anyways, because often you're going to have kind of a preset chain of effects that you like to apply to a bunch of different items. But you do need to tweak the effects, but you don't want to have a different chain every time. Right. So, so yep. having one track with just all of your effects and then you're just applying those effects to uh, various items, I think that's a really cool way of working. Yep. So yeah. you got to make sure the only the, the thing with these scripts is uh, I built in a thing where you have to make sure that you've got an effect actually selected. So you got to go into your effects list and make sure that something's highlighted that you've act actually clicked it. Mm -hmm. um, you can leave the window up, and unfortunately, I have a really small screen, so I don't have a whole lot of real estate here. But um, let me drag this out of the way with my broken trackpad. And then uh, you can see the way that the script works is with full items. So if you're a Pro Tools user used to working with uh, where, you can, where you can click and drag and select half of a clip and then do audio suite and it cuts it automatically, uh, that's not, unfortunately, the way this one works. Um, but you can just go ahead and split the items yourself before you go ahead and run the scripts too. Yeah. So if I wanted to EQ, let's say I've got a this stereo drum loop here, um, then all I have to do is select it first. So I'll select off just to show you. Select it. And then I hit my hotkey. And then there you go. It starts going. And it automatically loops itself. So just so everyone knows, the script is now running. It's... It's right. not a normal playback mode. It's it's uh, the preview mode for the script. Right. You can see these other tracks are muted. Uh, and it, even if I have something already on this track, if I have audio on this track, then all of those individual items are going to be muted too. Okay. So that way you can hear what's going on specifically for the things that you selected. And that's even if this uh, audio this audio item, the media item, jumped over an audio or a media item that was on this track. So we can actually even overlap media items. And it still works. So I'll do a high pass or excuse me, a low pass just to take it away and make it obnoxious so you can see what's going on. Then stop the playback. It asks you if we want to take adjusted effects. You click OK. And if you don't want to, then you just click cancel. But in this case, click OK. Stop recording before apply track effects. That's a bug right there because I'm recording myself so you'll hear me. <laughs> Um, but essentially, that's the idea of it. And it jumps back. It can actually see it actually even took it because you, you see render 01 right there. Yeah. But that's the gist of it. You hit cancel or you hit OK, and then all the items will jump back to tracks. Um, I'd even show you again, You can I can select multiple items. So I can select both of these. I'll do it real fast just so you can see the cancel. So both those items jump. If I stop it, you wish to abort, click cancel then they jump back. So, and that that's the way that it works uh, for entire effect chains. And the, uh, the script is intelligent enough that you can do stereo, mono, and multi-channel files all at one time. You just have to be smart enough not to do a stereo file with a mono EQ. Right. Okay. So if you select a, a mono file, run it through the effects chain, is it going to create a, a stereo effect or a mono? What happens there? Right. Yes. Uh, since I can't control what plugins you're going to touch, I'm not looking at, I, I don't have a way to know exactly if the plugin is a stereo or mono or multi-channel plugin. So it has some sort of uh, user dependence on that. Uh, mm -hmm. But it the script looks through and sees how many channels that the source file has. And so if it's got a stereo source and a mono source and a multi-channel source, it processes all of those independently with their correct channels. Because essentially the heart of the script at the very end is a, is a take effects command. Yeah. Uh, but the way that Reaper works is if you just do a general take effects command, it assumes that your file is stereo. Yeah. Um, so I've had to jump through and check what the source file is and make sure that it does take effects, but it does take effects correctly in that it's stereo, mono, or multi-channel. Very cool.
Uh, and I've seen other, I mean, there's other options for uh, audio suite with other scripts out there, but I try to make this in a way that's uh, you can actually deploy it on a in a professional user setting where if you're making a game or you're doing post-production and you're in a legitimate house that has money behind it um, and you actually have to put out a, a really legitimate project, then you should be able to just incorporate this into your workflow immediately and have no bugs, no questions asked unless unless you see the, you know, recording while I'm recording myself while I'm talking to John and we had a bug pop up there because who does that? But... <laughs> A little uncommon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's really cool. So so the steps are like select the track, yep. the, the, the effect track, select mm -hmm. the item, hit the script button, it will start playing. It will, you can tweak the effect to customize the sound for that instance of uh, the take effect. You finish and then the non-destructive version will create a, a new take on that item. Right, correct. That's absolutely correct. Very cool. Unless you have anything else to add, I think we are done here. Cool. Um, I don't know that I have a whole lot to add, but if you are interested in learning more about Rescript, I have a basic tutorial online that is directed primarily at audio guys who've never scripted before. I'm kind of somewhat of a new programmer myself. Uh, I have a little bit of a background in computer science, which is why I've gone and done some of these things that like, for example, Matt wanted Audio Suite. I've found a distinct lack of explanations for audio guys who are trying to get into something like Rescript. That's a pretty simple programming language, a, a pretty simple uh, scripting language, excuse me. Uh, so I've, I've kind of tried to write out a handful of tutorials online to direct it at you who don't you, if you have no idea what programming is and how to, how to do it, and you're really intimidated by getting in front of a text editor and writing some code. Uh, then I've written out with full code examples and all of that sort of stuff aimed directly at you how to actually get started. Um, and I think Reaper is a great, a great place to start um, for audio people who are trying to learn how to code. And if you're especially doing game audio, I think that game audio people should be able to write a little bit of code here and there because it, it helps communication amongst team, right? So yeah. But yeah, the, other than that, come check it out. AdamTCroft.com slash instant dash take is the direct product link. Uh, I blog every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at AdamTCroft.com about various audio subjects. And if you have any questions, you can catch me online at Twitter at AdamTCroft. Wicked. Thank you so much. Thanks. And that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. And visit ReaperBlog.net for a lot more tutorials. Thank you.